zombies, alien slugs, and an R-rated Scooby-Doo. Honestly, it's kind of a miracle James Gunn joined the family-friendly Marvel Universe. Keep watching to see why Gunn credits the Toxic Avenger with teaching him all he knows about filmmaking, and so much more. James Gunn found his time working at the micro-budget film production company Troma Entertainment to be far more worthwhile than earning an MFA from Columbia University. While making $400 a week, he was given an on-hands crash course on the practicality of filmmaking. Writing the script for the trashy horror comedy Tromeo and Juliet may not seem impressive, but Gunn says working on that film taught him quite a lot. He learned how to write screenplays, produce films, scout locations, direct actors, distribute films, and create his own poster art. Troma does absolutely every aspect of filmmaking in-house, which allowed Gunn a full circle look at the industry as a whole. Gunn has called Troma founder Lloyd Kaufman his mentor and has cited Kaufman as pivotal to his success. He said, I learned to try to make a movie for free and you'll end up spending the bare minimum of what you can spend. That's what we like to hear. Troma films are known for their shoestring budgets, scraping together horror, sci-fi, and gross out comedy films as a genuine labor of love. For the studio's over 45 year history, Troma has produced, acquired, and distributed over 1,000 independent films. It's even helped launch the careers of creatives like South Park creators Trey Parker and Matt Stone. Gunn later co-authored the book, All I Need to Know About Filmmaking I Learned from the Toxic Avenger, the shocking true story of Troma Studios. In it, Kaufman argued that the best possible film school is just getting a group of people together and making the damn movie. For his first Hollywood screenplay, Gunn penned the script for the live-action Scooby-Doo movie. Clearly still feeling the effects of his years at Troma, the original cut of the film would have earned an R rating. There's obviously no way Warner Brothers and Hanna-Barbera would have let their golden goose leave the family-friendly confines, and Gunn was challenged to restructure the film for all ages. Either that or I'm out of here! While Gunn personally believes Scooby-Doo should have continued with the intended plan to make a raunchy teen comedy, the film's retooling may have been the best possible exercise to prepare him for his eventual superhero work. It taught him just how far he could push comedy and scares while still appeasing the MPA, and the film was a massive success. Gunn was approached to write a variety of Hanna-Barbera films in the wake of Scooby-Doo, but instead set his sights on the Dawn of the Dead remake with director Zack Snyder. Horror fans expected Dawn of the Dead to fail, as remakes are usually not well received. However, Gunn and Snyder did the impossible, and Dawn of the Dead surpassed all expectations. Gunn knew it would be a fool's errand to try and remake the film beat by beat, so he instead provided a story that featured the most memorable moments and lines of the original, but still felt wholly original and updated for modern audiences. This is the film of someone who not only loves the source material, but respects it. This mindset would prove beneficial later in his career as he adapted well-loved comic books. In his directorial debut, Gunn combined everything he'd learned working in both the low-budget world of Troma and the Hollywood studio system, and created the 80s-inspired creature feature, Slither. A marriage of films like Night of the Creeps, Shivers, and The Brood, Gunn made the most of his $15 million budget. He delivered an independent horror film boasting some of the best practical effects in years. On making the film, he shared, I learned to fight for what I believed in. Universal originally wasn't going to spend the money to screen the film for critics, but Gunn felt that it was necessary and convinced the studio otherwise. The film ended up being one of the best reviewed horror movies in years, even if the crowds didn't turn out for it. Gunn explained, the truth is that Slither was not financially successful. So the fact that it was so well reviewed really helped my career. There are times in life when I just have to follow this instinct, no matter how uncomfortable it is. Slither is a mix of everything that makes James Gunn great. It's hilarious, creepy, filled with practical effects, impressively graphic, features a killer soundtrack, and boasts an incredible performance from Michael Rooker. Ah! Why are you running from me, baby? I wasn't gonna hurt you! I love you, baby! It also has an unexpected heart that sneaks up on the viewer with the same tension as a jump scare. Slither is a love letter to the B-movie horror and sci-fi films that helped formulate Gunn's love of cinema, and evidence that James Gunn was the future. When Gunn was announced as the writer and director of Guardians of the Galaxy, genre fans couldn't have been more thrilled. Marvel was already nine films deep into the Infinity Saga when Guardians debuted, and it was clear that Gunn was on an entirely different wavelength than what came before. Gunn's sense of humor was a bit edgier than what was seen in films like Iron Man, Thor, and Captain America, and his lovable group of misfits felt a lot like the teams Gunn brought to life in Scooby-Doo and Dawn of the Dead. Gunn effortlessly weaved in over-the-top violence with hilarity and heart like he had done with Slither, 
Despite the commercial failure of his black comedy film Super, Gunn was able to show that he knew a thing or two about comic book movies. Guardians ushered in a new form of maturity to the MCU, with sensibilities clearly inspired by his previous work. He took things to the next level with the Suicide Squad, which, until Peacemaker, felt like the most James Gunn project to ever come to life. As Slash Film's own Danielle Ryan described them, both feature unlikely heroes, unconventional love stories, mind-controlling alien hordes, and more guts and gore than you could shake a stick at. Both are stories about how we treat each other, and how our assumptions about one another can hurt us more than even invading aliens. Gunn brings the metaphors hidden beneath the gore and spectacle of a horror film to the superhero franchise. In doing so, he proves why there's always been deeper themes in comic book movies worth exploring, and that you can never go wrong with an extra bucket of blood. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Slash Film videos about your favorite movies and TV shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.